Hello, welcome to this edition of KBSN. You can't let fear or doubt keep you caged, not when you're a King Philip warrior. We are what you call a class act, as our athletes continue to display values of pride, integrity, and resilience. Through their never give up attitude, they showcase the importance of overcoming failures with dignity and embodying good sportsmanship on and off the field. Each member of the King Philip family represents the green and gold with honor and respect, standing together as a symbol of unity and strength. It's not just about wins and losses, but about giving it your all and never backing down. No matter your circumstances, the lessons learned in sports carry over into everyday life, teaching us valuable skills that will serve us well in the future. Whether you're actively participating in the game or cheering from the sidelines, there's an inspiration and wisdom to be gained from the King Philip Warrior spirit. In the face of any circumstance, we believe that we will win, not only with our victories, but simply by being part of this green and gold force. The pride that we feel from our teams and the values they represent will always keep us united as we strive to strengthen the links of our far-reaching warrior nation. Legacy lives and thrives here at King Philip. While leaving a legacy is not mandatory, it can give us a greater sense of purpose in life. There are many examples of families carrying on their legacy within our King Philip community, and one of those is the Gorman family. Wrestler Michael Gorman in the class of 2022 was notable for his dominance in the 145 weight class on the wrestling mat. Gorman was a sectional champion in his tenure, which undoubtedly acted as a catalyst for his younger sister, Ksenia. Ksenia Gorman is the only female on our Warrior Wrestling team, and she is carrying on the family legacy with courage and determination. Well, being uh, the only girl on the wrestling team is very challenging for me, um, but I do have a lot of support from my teammates, which is a really good thing. And um, I just believe that they've given me a lot of support to be able to get to where I am right now. And uh, yeah, and also my inspiration for this, um, my brother, he also wrestled um, for high school, this school, and um, he's been doing it at Club 2, I also have been, and uh, I just started noticing that he's been getting better at it, so I was thinking that maybe I can also get good at it. And so I decided to do wrestling in high school too. More and more wrestling teams across the state have female members, which is an exciting trend. And we wish Ksenia well as she continues to advance her King Philip career. With the postseason beginning this weekend, the King Philip wrestling team finished the regular season with a 13-4 dual meet record, placing top 10 in every tournament they've competed in. After missing the team sectional podium by one point last year, this stacked lineup aims to take home gold at the D1 West Central sectional tournament, taking place tomorrow in Springfield. Senior captain Colby Kluder is looking for his third sectional championship win as he continues his undefeated season. After a state championship title last year, Colby plans to repeat his tremendous goal as he moves further into the postseason. We're going into the postseason this weekend. Uh, the team's looking really good. Uh, we have all 14 weight classes filled, which is really good. Um, it's going to be another month or so if we all make it as far as we can. And I think we're going to do really good this year in Division One for our first time ever. It's going to be a little bit of a different challenge now moving up to Division One compared to last year in sectionals and states. So um, I'm ready for the challenge. I think the team is also all ready for the challenge. Coach has been having us put a lot more work in this year, and I think we're ready to take on the challenge. Juniors Loden Wells and Kevin Gillis are also looking for their first MIAA tournament win this weekend. Wells and Gillis both placed second last year at sectionals and are poised to win it all in 2024. Uh, we're wrestling really tough this week and we're getting good practices in, working on all our techniques, making sure we perfect everything by Saturday. I feel pretty confident going into sectionals. I feel like I'm going to make it to states this year again. Um, all stage is the main goal because uh, I haven't made it there fully yet. so. Hopefully this year, I can make it that far. Our goals are to get as many guys as far to the postseason as we can. We're going to see how we do at sectionals, hopefully get all of our guys, obviously, to state level, and then from there, all states and New England, hopefully. The gymnastics team took on OA on the road and lost a tough meet by under two points. The team scored 137.4, just shy of their goal to hit 140, was to hope to do at the Hawk Championship on Saturday. The big meet will take place at Newton North, and they will be up against the competition of nine other teams. The team continues to train hard for the big season finale. The last competition was against OA on Tuesday night, and we had a really strong meet. It was one of our better ones. But OA had a stronger team, so they beat us by a little bit. I think we had a really good meet, and we only lost by eight tenths. 
so. I think we have to work on floor and beam because that's what we mainly lost on at the last meet. A lot of people have done a good job stepping up and out of nowhere and getting us some good st scores. So I think on floor and beam I've tried to up my step value a little bit with like bonuses. So I hope to have those count for Hawks. Um, I'm doing bars and beam and I'm also hoping to get my scores a little higher because I got one of the lowest scores at the last meet on bars. So I'm hoping I really get it higher. <laughs> I think like this season though, it's been a little unpredictable. Like the scores has been all over. So it's kind of annoying to see that because like some like you're expecting like one score and then they give you like a lower score. Like the judging was just all over the place. So we really don't know what to expect for Hawks, but we're just gonna try to put our best out there. Coming up in the last race of the season, the ski team has made history at King Phil. The girls team won three races, which has never happened in program history. The boys team did not fall far behind, finishing on the podium almost every race. These athletes have made an impressive showing for the program this season and are looking forward to competing at states. How did it feel making it to the state finals? We're really excited. We have at least three racers going this year, so we get to go as a team. Yeah, we've had some great coaching this year and some excellent captains who get us through it. You know, snow's been great, skiing's been great, team's done great. It's a good year for KP Ski. Our girls' basketball team took a second loss this season to the Attleboro Blue Bombardiers. They held a tight score throughout the game and were leading by three with 10 seconds left. However, Attleboro drained a clutch three-pointer, sending the game into overtime. Our girls lost their edge and fell 41-47. As always, they play with heart and determination and continue to feel positive about their accomplishments. Last night, they celebrated their nine seniors before taking on the Milford Scarlet Hawks. I'm here with Lily Hickey, girls basketball. Uh, you guys are taking on the Hawk rival this week, Milford. What are you guys' thoughts on the game plan for this week? Um, well, tomorrow's senior night, so we're hoping it's going to be a good game. Last week, we played Milford, we had a really good game. Um, and we're on kind of a losing streak right now, so hopefully we can turn that around tomorrow. Hopefully we can do that. Tonight was senior night. Um, we won. We beat Milford by a good amount of points. It was a scrappy game. Kaylin, um, we won by almost 30, so it was good. All seniors got playing time. We all touched the court. A lot of people scored. So it was a good night. They head to North Attleboro on Tuesday, a team the girls beat earlier in the season, so they are banking on another good show against the Red Rocketeers. After a rough game against Franklin last week, the boys basketball team was hoping to bounce back against Attleboro, a team they beat earlier in the season, but it didn't go as planned. The Bombardiers played a full court press and caused a lot of turnovers. With a win, they would have clinched a spot in the playoffs, but unfortunately, they still have some work to do to get there. They need to win three out of their last five games to guarantee a spot or they could potentially get in because of their rating. Either way, for this team, it's playoffs or bust. They plan to make it happen. The improvements this team has made to their defense from past years is dominant, forcing opposing offenses to pick up their dribble and make difficult passes for easy turnovers. Tommy McLeish is the fifth best rebounder in the Hockamock League, which benefits the Warriors to more offensive possessions and turnovers on defense. Juniors Brandon Nicastro and Jack Cassini are hot all over the court, putting up the majority of the points for the Warriors. You know, we're just going to focus on one game at a time just to make this playoff run. Uh, I like our chances, a couple wins to make the playoffs. Uh, it's just about who really wants it, and uh, I think it's going to be us. So, uh, 1v1 ISO, game on the line. What's your go-to move? I'll give you a little demonstration. Right? Okay. So, we'll change the scenery. Um, so it's kind of just like, I'm going like tween, right? And I'm just going cross, yeah. and then it's in like a step back, and then it's a jump shot. You making that? Uh, 10 times out of 10. Last night, they had an important game against Milford, and Tuesday night, they will host North Attleboro, a team that has no dubs in the win column yet this season. Some added energy will come from the team's teacher appreciation night on Tuesday and senior night versus Taunton on Friday. As the regular season nears its end, the team recognizes the importance of upcoming matchups, knowing that a win could be the key to clinching a coveted playoff berth. The players are undoubtedly fueled by their leadership, and the prospect of postseason play hangs in the balance as they prepare for these crucial upcoming contests. Our winter cheer team has been practicing for weeks in preparation for their first meet happening tomorrow at Bill Ricca High School. 
They are coming off a wildly successful fall showing in hopes of continuing to build on a really strong foundation. There's nine girls on varsity and then there's about 20 on JV, so definitely for JV it's a lot to get everyone in unison and work together and learn skills and for varsity we're really just trying to put out the best of the best and get a really good nice strong group. Our routine we have a lot of new and improved stunts and much more difficult which is very good for us. Um, we have some really good tumbling and tumblers and our jumps have progressed a lot since fall and I think this routine is going to do a lot for us this season. We definitely have some goals to really try to get consistently in the 80s above which is what we need to um, advance to states once regionals comes around so we're really just trying to get those 80s and get all the skills that we know we can um, coming up before states. Our indoor track team traveled to the long-awaited Hawk Championship meet yesterday afternoon and they were hoping their dedicated training over the course of the past few weeks would pay off. We'll bring you those results next week. The KP girls hockey team only has four games left in the regular season, one of which is tomorrow night in Franklin at 8.30 p.m. The girls look to redeem themselves after the last game against the Panthers where they unfortunately lost 4-3 in overtime after a highly competitive game. This past week, KB had one game against Stoughton Sharon and won 8-1. Senior captain Kelly Holmes led the scoring with three goals followed by two from Tyla McDuff, two from Annabelle Curran, and one from Katie McGann. The girls currently have a 10-7 record and have one more home game next week on Wednesday at 5 o'clock. So yesterday we played Stoughton, we won 8-1. And it was a pretty slow game, but we kept the intensity up still, and we're just keep moving forward. On Saturday, we play Franklin again, which will be a really close game. Last game was really close, and we lost in overtime, but it should be a good game to watch. Hope to see you there cheering them on before they enter the postseason tournament. Our boys hockey team had a long break following a devastating loss to Mansfield last week with a score of 3-2. The goals in that game came from Captain Max Robeson and Senior Jack Morgan. The team took the weekend to rest and regroup, followed by a strong, hard, and fast-paced couple of days of practice. They are hoping to come in with a sharp edge in preparation for a strong Arlington Catholic team. The Warriors stood atop of the Division II rankings, coming at number 8 with a 10-3-2 record for their battle against Arlington Catholic at the Foxborough Sports Center Wednesday night. However, a slow start in the first period pushed the boys back two goals. Coming out of the first period intermission, the team had high hopes to cut down the lead. But a second period goal from Arlington Catholic would put the boys down 3-0. Things just couldn't seem to get going for our boys hockey team as Arlington Catholic scored two empty netters in the third period to walk away with a 5-0 win. With only a couple games to go in the regular season, the time is now for the Warriors. A hot streak in the final stretch of the regular season could be a huge advantage going into the playoffs. The Warriors will travel to the New England Sports Village in Attleboro to face the Shamrocks of Fian on their senior night Saturday. The boys need the fans to bring some energy as they push towards grabbing a top seed for the Division II playoffs. You're with senior captain Max Robeson. How do you think the home stretch is going to be for the hockey team? Uh, we've had a rough start to the final uh, few games, but I think the Fiend game is going to be a turnaround point for the team. It's a big game for all of us, you know, like the little KP, Fiend rivalry. But tough loss last night, Archbury. Arlington Catholic. I think we all played them, had a few bad bounces, but I think we turn around after these two big days of practice. Uh, yeah, I'm going to Fian, come out of Fian with a big win. It's going to be a tough one for the boys. We, uh, we've been working very hard in practice all week. Had some good uh, good drills going and uh, just flowing. Flowing. Boys are, boys are ready to go. Very good team, but we've been working hard all week and I'm really looking forward to see how the boys perform. I think we just play our game. Bring it the way we did against Franklin, Canton, we'll be fine. Get pucks in deep, lay hits, play hard. The swim teams finished up their seasons at the Hawk Championship meet over the weekend and had several swimmers that qualified for the sectionals and states. The boys teams finished 11th place overall and the girls snagged fifth. I was just trying to make sectionals, I didn't even look at the states cut so I had no idea that I was even close to that and I finished and um, I went to talk to my dad and he was like, I think you just made states, which didn't expect at all and so that was a very big shock um, and then I talked to my coach and she said the same thing so yeah that was really cool and then in the 100 back I was a little less stressed for it because I had already made um, sectionals and states so it was like more fun event um, and I ended up making states in that too which was 
really fun. It was very exciting. We've been working very hard and we're happy that it paid off. Um, we had a lot of high uh, scoring swims as well as um, my relay team, which we got second in our relay, and we made sectionals, which was really exciting. We're a smaller team, so it's really, really hard to place extremely high, but I'd say we had a really, really nice time. Just putting in the effort that I have has really made me grow as a person. Um, as a freshman and sophomore, um, I kind of felt like I could learn from things, and then as a junior and now a senior, I felt that I can use that application to grow myself as a person and help other people grow. I'm really excited about where everyone's progress is, especially our new swimmers who started off at the beginning of the year. We had swimmers that had no idea how to swim at all. So, and now they're doing 50s, 100s of not only freestyle, but other strokes too. So we're really excited about where they ended up. And yeah, it was a very successful season overall. And I'm really sad it's over. The biggest night in sports is back again this Sunday at the Allegiant Stadium in Paradise, Nevada. The San Francisco 49ers are taking on the Kansas City Chiefs for the NFL title. But the big question is, will Taylor Swift make it all the way back from Tokyo in time for the start of the game? Enjoy your Super Bowl weekend and next week we can count down the days until our February break. Good luck to all our winter teams competing this weekend and we'll bring you all the updates next week. This is KPSN.